We just had a Trey you on, by the way, who uh, just dropped a brand new track with Travis Barker, which is pretty sick. But here he is right now, our buddy Goody Grace in the building. What's up, buddy? Uh, man, I love a Trey you. I've loved a Trey you for years and years and years. Do you really? Shit, man. How about I should have oh, had you uh, on? Yeah. I should have had you on with them, dude. I just literally had them on 30 minutes ago. Man, uh, for, yeah, man. They were like first albums, like changed my life. I used to cover uh, Fork in the Road, Knife in My Back, Knife in Your Back song, like crazy. <laughs> Boom. And X's and O's, Bleed yeah. Mascara. I'm, I'm well educated in the topic. Dude, I was speaking with Travis, the guitarist, about Bleeding Mascara, man, about the guitar riff. Because that riff that comes out in that song, you're just like, boom, let's go. Let's oh, go. It's amazing. Shit, man. Well, he listen, it's a good stream. Yeah. He, dude, he, and, and they, have a brand new, uh, they have a brand new song out called Warrior with Travis Barker um, that just dropped, right. which is sick. And Travis does like a little bit of like a marching band thing in the middle of it. It's very sick. And uh, they got a new album coming out in June. So, uh, small world, man. Love it, though. Like yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Goody Grace right. on the gun show with Guns himself. My man, how are you, dude? I miss you, bro. I miss you too, man. I feel like the last time we talked was probably like exactly a year ago. <laughs> Why does this? I, I, yeah, it could be, man. And <laughs> At I don't least know. When I was on the show. Not not talk personally, but last time I was on your show, I remember I, uh, it was when my last best song, If I Want To, came out uh, around last like 420. So yeah, around this time. Now, what would you, uh, how would you summarize your uh, last year of life, my friend? With the <laughs> pandemic man, and everything. Been, <laughs> man, it's been good, man. It's been like, I feel like I've made the most of the pandemic in the ways I could. Obviously I can't tour and stuff, but I mean, I wrapped up my first full length project and released that um, on February 26th. So, you know, that was, uh, that was really kind of my focus of the fall and winter. and. I'm happy to have that out and, uh, you know, for everyone to be listening to it. I now, know that you've checked it out. It means a lot to me. Yeah, man. I, and we're going to delve into that project because I haven't talked to you. I've been trying to get you on the show, but I know there's a lot of obligations and you're doing your thing. But <laughs> I'm glad that, you know, a lot more people were able to hear the songs by the time we had you on now. It's been a couple months. Oh, so me that, too. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. But mm -hmm. we, but we've had you on throughout the, you know, throughout the years and throughout your career, man. But I want to ask you this because you did put out this great, great solid album, well deserved, well earned for sure. Did you, Thank you, did you have to make any changes? Like, was a lot of it done already? Did you find yourself going back and rewriting perhaps certain lyrics, or just kind of like perhaps add even additional mm -hmm. tracks on it because of everything that went on, like, or the mentally or anything like that? Tell us about it. Yeah, I mean, a lot of, I'd say maybe, you know, I mean, I've been working on what was going to be, it's essentially not the debut album that'll be coming, but I just had to put out a, a nice little, like, body of work for people to dive into. A few of the songs, I'd say, were made, started at least pre-pandemic, but a lot of, you know, obviously Scumbag was out in 2019, so that was, like, an older one. Uh, but other than that, I think pretty much every song um i made you know uh since fall i'd say since like october like i really a lot of the ideas were maybe in my laptop i produced the majority of the project and you know i, I cut my own vocals and kind of do all of that so a lot of it i just kind of wanted to yeah uh revamp up even if i had the song so the energy is all there because i would say that you know most of the songs were completed in you know, within two months before the project came out. So I just want to keep that kind of like current relevant energy rather than being like, oh, I've sat on this version for like a year. You right. know, I kind of wanted to bring them all back together. And and what's great about this though, man, is because you have sat on some songs, whether it's industry or whether you just have to wait on timetables. And I know just talking to you and stuff, you're like, yo, man, I just want songs to get out there. So it's cool that, yeah. you know, these didn't have to wait as long as, They've waited in the past for the fans to finally hear them, you know? Absolutely. No, and it was just nice to just be like, here's some music to tide, you know, everyone over. And it was really about the features and the collaborations and stuff. That's why, you know, the title, Don't Forget Where You Came From, it's not only just, you know, about the subject matter of what the music's about, but it's also about, like, a lot of my heroes are on there and stuff. And, you know, Blink and Travis Barker drums on a couple songs and, uh, Juicy J's on two songs and just, you know, uh, Cigarettes After Sex and G-Eazy and 
I think um, it was just really about having a fun project of getting a lot of my friends and inspirations all on the same, um, you know, body of work. We're speaking here with Goody Grace. You can follow him on the social media. Man, I'm proud of you for a number of reasons. One is because, you know, I mentioned a couple of years ago, you know, and then we started talking and stuff. You've been on the gun show a bunch. Like, you know, we learned more about your backstory, how much you really want to do music, how much you really want this to be a part of you. And then I even saw, like, you know, posting on, like, Instagram or Twitter and stuff. You, like, with a guitar when you were young and stuff. Like, you know, like, like this is what you, like, this is, you've always wanted to do music. But it's not easy, man. And being from, you know, you're, for those that don't know, you're from Canada and stuff. And, like, you know, but within the past two years or so, man, like, you've been like embraced or that you know the um a lot of legit musicians whether it's our buddy mitchie collins from lovely the band to somebody like a travis yeah. parker to like the mgk crew or whoever it might be kind of just like mm -hmm. taking you as one of their own and here you are just some fucking skinny ass dude in canada <laughs> who loves music Re like just yeah, taking man. that leap of faith man being able to go to la and just being fortunate enough to work with some really good musicians man that doesn't happen to everybody and you know that dude Totally, man. I'm so grateful, and that's why I just keep working hard. And yeah, man, I talked to Mitchie right before I hopped on. He said to say hi. So shout out the boy Mitchie. <laughs> uh, man, yeah, man. You know, it's just it's so cool. It's like uh, I think that's what keeps me going. You know, there's so many artists that continuously like keep reaching out and just understand what I'm doing, and especially with the you know kind of genre bending, um, genre list style that I kind of approach from. It's cool to uh, get love and respect from the people that you know, I really like and, you know, whether I'm in the studio with Travis Barker and, you know, and like with Mark Hoppus on Scumbag or with Juicy J, like it's all the same energy and it's all still me and it's still like my heart and soul in it no matter uh, what the song may sound like. So I'm just happy that both the public and a lot of, um, you know, uh, musicians I look up to uh, are starting to kind of understand and like see uh, my vision. And what's cool about Goody for the listeners out there, he's got that obviously that massive song "Scumbag" featuring Blink One Eight Two. He's got you know he's got multiple songs that uh, you know have done pretty well, Jeezy, whoever it might be. But you, as you already attributed to us, man, I brought up Atreyu. You're like, dude, I fucking love Atreyu, and you also like love real friends, and like you like yes, that sir. music. So now that there is that crossover that seems to be getting more popular these days or whatever and i love it because i'm a fucking pop punk king myself bro let's go you know what i mean yeah. like I'm fucking guns so like that crossover yeah. that's happening because you also do like rapping you do like being able to like uh you know spit differently or whatnot whatever it might be during a song the crossover man the timing yeah. is perfect because that's what you've all it's all your favorite things coming together at once agreed and we're at like a fine time where um yeah everyone understands and gets it and you know and then there's like there's some folk stuff on there too, like the song used to be, and uh, there's some punk stuff like Not Coming Home, that's Travis Drums, and uh, some like indie rock, like the song Auburn. Like, I think there's just some really cool vibes, and yeah, like you said, it's funny you mentioned Real Friends. I've been in Real Friends merch for the past like seven days. I'm not right now, but <laughs> I was. I've been wearing, they, they sent me some stuff that like was supposed to get sent a long time ago, and nice. I've been wearing so much. I, I love Real Friends, man. You're right. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just educated in music. I'm I'm just a music nerd, and you know that's it's always been kind of like troublesome for me to try and like pigeonhole myself as to what I want to make. And now I just fully embrace being like whatever comes out when I'm sitting at my laptop with my guitar. That's that's whatever I run with, you know. And it's that that I want to delve into because the new album is available for everybody out there. If you haven't listened to it, you're an idiot. You sure as hell don't listen to the Gun Show because I've been playing the fuck out of this album. It's so te it's so good. It's so solid. But musically wise, man, it's it's got such a it's like you said it's 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 all over the place, but still synchronized enough that it makes sense. So, and that's what your music's been up to this. Every time we have you on, yeah. I'm always like, you have a song that puts this mood into me or this mood or whatever it might be. Literally, it's good and great, right. this album. But I want to start off with it, man, because it starts off with like that hypnotic, or not hypnotic, um, that hymnic, I don't know hymnic's a word, but like a hymn. Like think of like a church hymn type yeah. thing, like a chorus. Absolutely. That's what I was going for. Like a choir type vibe to it. And then in the background, if you listen with the headphones, you can hear that guitar in the background kind of like being picked out a little bit, man. And then of course it yep. goes into you. And like I can just envision when like when live concerts come back, man, you just walking out to that song with like the lights exactly. and stuff. <laughs> That's what I made it for. And you know, it's I, I love that you can even like decipher that and hear that because you know, a song like that or 
this, you know, the the first five songs on the project I wrote and produced uh, fully, you know, like those beat, like that intro beat, I, that's just all in my laptop. I made most of the drums and everything on an airplane and uh, the guitars and, and like, you know, adding all those kind of cinematic elements and stuff. And like you said, like a hymn, like I really was trying to reference some like, you know, church music for that. Like that's really where all the work goes in. And like you said, how it's diverse, but still cohesive like the the cohesiveness of the music is because at the end of the day like it is still all me so like like i said it's really my heart poured into every single sound that you hear in in the music and when you're listening to it and we'll get to a couple of the questions right now into the chat in just a minute right now if you have any questions for goody make sure to drop me a follow on twitch or instagram whatever it might be definitely drop me a follow but if you have any questions for goody feel free to jump in or anything like that with the chat uh to us but I think the other thing is that, like, you start off with that first track, and then, you know, those first four or five songs, my man, are kind of just, it goes from that first track to the second track, which picks up, obviously, more of a punk beat and stuff, to track three, then track four with Juicy and stuff, man. You're just all, it's wild. But those four first songs mm -hmm. are totally all different and just fucking sick, dude. Mm -hmm. Thank you, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, and that was the whole motive, and it's really, like, like it's kind of a concept album in a sense, you know, a lot of the lyrics are kind of, it's like this dichotomy of me coming, speaking from my perspective now, and then my spe like perspective from when I was like 16, like not coming home is like a real, like, you know, screw you type punk song about just wanting to run away from home. And, you know, the song Auburn and, and then yeah. it, 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 you know, about the struggles of being from a small town. And then, a song like North with Juicy J is like repping being from the small town and it's all the, yeah, it's the weird back and forth and kind of, it's really a true like representation into my mind of how I see music and, and just how the past like seven years of my life have been. I got one more question on the album, then we'll get to a couple questions and shoot the shit with our buddy yeah. Goody Grace here. I remember specifically texting you when I first heard the album. I don't know if I got the advance or maybe I listened to it at like 1201 midnight or whatever when it was uh -huh. and I remember just being like damn bro and I, I was texting like a couple of my buddies that know you and stuff and just all about it and stuff I was like yo dude fuck yeah but 21 and Jaded dude is like my jam like I, I remember writing to you I think uh -huh. I was just like yo that sounds like beautiful and you know guns I don't yeah, use the word yeah. beautiful bro I was like do I text in that word but no I was, like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like yo but the song like is fucking beautiful man and tell me a little bit about that man because it, I think, I don't know if it was because of quarantine, whether it was all the shit we're going through, or I think I can listen to that song in a, a part of any era in my life, man. And like, whether I'm cruising, blazing, drinking, hanging with homies, whatever it might be. Uh, and that song's going to resonate still, man, at any point in my life. Yeah, you know, it's, that means a lot to me. And that's actually why I used to um, age 21 rather than, you know, I'm 23. And I had started the song uh, with the producer, Mr. Hudson, who's a legend. Um, and then I had got Travis Barker to drum on it. And then um, Anthony Fantano, this music reviewer, he played bass on it. And it was really just a cool, like, I've had that song for a while. I've been at least crafting it because it just, I always knew I wanted it to be like the outro of the project of whatever it was going to be because it just felt so grand and like, so nostalgic you know it felt like a friday like getting out of high school like like type shit and uh, um i like i was just so happy that i kind of got that sound and when i was making it i was just like what better age than like 21 you know it's like the uh you know it's just the youthful coming of age year and it's 21 and jaded i think you could be 21 and jaded and be in your 30s like wow. it's just uh, <laughs> you know what i mean it's more the mentality than anything and yeah, I mean, that, that ending, the lost my mind trying to find myself, I just, I think that's, you know, one of my favorite parts of the project personally, when it just gets so big and uh, grand and, you know, it's very, like, theatrical towards the, the end of that song. It really means a lot to me that you like it. And, of course, it goes up in the chorus, like, lost my mind. Like, it goes up, you know, in the chorus at the end as well, yeah. man. Hi, hi, hi. I'm almost yeah. screaming. Yeah. yeah. Belt again. Dude, <laughs> that live, though, is going to be, I mean, you know fans are going to be, absolutely uh you know freaking out live i want to bring up live real quick for the viewers and the audience whether you're watching us live right now on the gun show has twitch or you're listening to us on spotify adobe radio itunes youtube wherever it might be afterwards uh thank you appreciate that we're speaking here with goody grace here on the gun show guns is my last name with a z let's go g-u-n-z but 
Nobody knows when concerts are coming back. I can't say this. We are in the, we're turning that corner. We're coming to that last, you know, we're at the third lap going to that fourth, you know, corner. Let's go. The light is, Literally. we can see the light, baby. Give me that light. Let's Almost go. There. We can see the light. Um, we don't know when things are going to come back or when certain shows are going to come back. We know festivals are happening in August, September, etc. But when shows do come back and Goody Grace can go on stage, man, dude, how pumped like are you like starting to like visualize and think about that like when shows come back how sick it's gonna be man oh it's all i do yeah my band is so ready we're so excited man like my my band is they're, they're the best and i've only got to do one tour with them i was just either touring like acoustic or was back in track for many years and now i really got a you know a couple good guys that are just amazing players and we have so much fun and i can't wait to just get on the road and do all of this like all this new music and all the, you know, the energy. I just feel like there's so much energy on Don't Forget Where You Came From um, that wasn't, that didn't exist, you know, in my previous music that I just cannot wait to convey live and in, in, in a live performance, yeah. It's gonna you be, know, when I, like, yeah. when, when a song like Not Coming Home or something live is like, I've never done anything like that since I was like a kid playing like punk music. So like, I can't wait to like really have a song of of you know those type of feels to perform live it's going to be a real special moment pierce from the chat just asked us when can we expect the next goody concert to be i uh, nobody knows anything right now so i don't know if you fully want to answer that but like if it's up to you you want to play sooner than later and you want to play in 2021 right like yeah you want to play shows if yeah i think, I think <laughs> as as soon as i possibly can yeah, yeah. hopefully by the end of the year i mean yeah. you know the last <laughs> The live stream shows and stuff are like, they're cool, but they don't really do it. So I just can't wait to be back. We got somebody. I hopefully, I mean, hopefully this fall. Yeah, hopefully. Absolutely, man. You know the crowd be loving that too. We got somebody named Nemo the Talking Fish, which I assume it has to do with finding Nemo. Uh, I would assume yeah. that. <laughs> Nemo wants to know, Goody, what's your favorite song you've ever made and why? And this person says, mine is Rest Your Eyes, Makes Me Emotional, Keep Doing Your wow. Thing, Buddy. Thank you so much. That's a real, that song means a lot to me. That might be one of my favorites as well, but I think that used to be um, that off of Don't Forget Where You Came From might be my favorite. That song really means a lot to me, and it's like an acoustic song, but it's just so powerful, and I can't wait to perform that live. You know, like a lot of these songs I haven't got to, to play, and um, I think that might be my favorite, though. That or Auburn, I, I, I really love... Uh, that song Auburn that one that one meant a lot that was the final song I made for the project I made that like two weeks before it came out wow. that was a real like kind of last quarter type thing you know ninth inning I was like nope I need to make this quick so uh yeah those two mean a lot to me of course that's track three on the new album that you can go check out with our buddy yeah. Goody right there I want to ask this you know during the last year, I was going back to nostalgic purposes. I was re-listening re to old stuff like Midtown or like the first album from Newfound Glory, just bands that really like got me or like made me feel young again and like my youth growing up and stuff. But then I was also listening to stuff like, like you know, other bands that like, you know, I do I know the Rolling Stones? Sure. But did I ever actually listen to the Rolling Stones stuff besides the hit? So then I spent time listening to that, right. all sorts of different genres. What got you, did you do the same thing or did you kind of like, did you branch out at all? Did you go back and listen to your stuff if you needed some motivation, man? Yeah, absolutely. I think there's like a lot of music. I'm just like a music like study or like I, I drive around and listen to music like passively, but I also like, I always say like my like musical diet is like, you know, in the same way that someone's like, oh, I need to eat this type of food today or you know i need i'm on like a diet plan that's right. like how i intake music and it also helps me be creative and it's also like therapy and you know some days i'll drive around and just listen to real friends and hot mulligan and like yeah. senses fail and taking back sunday and like all that and some days i just listen to like three six mafia and um future and like speaker knockers and some days i just listen to like johnny cash and bob dylan and i i really like have been expanding in those ways though um just kind of digging in because a lot of the music i like are kind of legacy acts so it's like you know there's not new music coming out from them so i kind of been diving deeper and i'm just such a music nerd i mean you know my all-time favorite is tom Waits. so i think in this quarantine i got a lot more into him and studying all his albums and the production and whatnot but 
I, I yeah. To answer the question, a hundred percent. I'm like a very active listener and have been trying to check off like a list of just being like, yeah, yeah. Have I ever really dove into that album, like you said about the Rolling Stones or something? You know. Yeah. Not, yeah. yeah. We've got uh, Steve-O here. You brought up the studio. It says, what's your favorite studio snack? And also, what snack can fans bring you when tours begin that you're looking forward to? <laughs> yeah, um, both. I, I think to answer to both questions, I really like sour candy, okay. like sour Skittles, like sour strips, or like, um, you know, those like, sour stringy things gotcha. anything <laughs> sour. i like i like sour candy i like mint tic tacs i like mint gum yeah um that's about it i eat a lot of candy in the studio and i drink water and pierce, uh, pierce wants to know what your favorite alcohol is <laughs> uh <laughs> um i like beer man yeah I, i'm a i'm a country boy i like beer i mean i have a jack daniels tattoo so I have to be a bit biased. I like I like whiskey, but you know I like it all. Can't go wrong with the but yeah. Can't go wrong responsibly. With the yes, I always drink responsibly. <laughs> it's our buddy Goody Grace here, the Gun Show, of course. New album available now for everybody. Follow him on all the social media. He'll be telling you all about the upcoming announcements, all of that. Appreciate you coming on, man, for sure. Thank um, you so much. Final question: Has uh, you know I know Hoppus. I know the Blake eyes, obviously, and stuff like that. Yeah. Hoppus, of course, is a uh, uh, a prankster, a jokester. Does uh, is he still does he still mess with you from time to time? Like, will you get random text messages from him? Does he play Xbox with? Like, does he play? You know, he streams a lot now. He's on Twitch all the time now. Yeah, How I do know. You... I don't. I don't game. I don't game with him. But I'll tell you, man, Hoppus actually we kept in great touch and we became so like close. Um, you know, he gave me the coolest gift I've ever kind of received. He gave me like like back when we were doing Scumbag and. Um, way before we even did Jimmy Kimmel, his comeback came out, he got me like a very, like one of the first pressings of the Smiths, There's a Life That Never Goes Out, single vinyl. And uh, yeah, I have like the lyrics from when we were making Scumbag framed in my room. And yeah, I mean, me and him keep in great touch. I just hopped on his Apple Music radio show a few few weeks ago and uh, we text all the time. He's hilarious, yeah. man. He, <laughs> he's, you know, he luckily hasn't pranked me or anything, but also, it's you know we've been covid safe so i can't wait to hang with him again and um i love him so much man he's he's uh i'm really happy to know him and i remember one of your life in the yeah it's straight up and it, absolutely and, and straight up one of your favorite moments i know or like ones that were so inspirational for you is when they brought you out for adam's song and you were just like that was life-changing when they brought you out your right, favorite band yeah. brings you out for adam's song you're just like oh my god like yeah man i mean those days you know 2019 was such a life-changing year <laughs> Uh, from Blink and everyone involved with them and, and the way that they supported me and, um, you know, really, like, put me on and helped me out when they didn't have to at all, just just out of, like, the kindness of their heart and understanding my vision and stuff. And, yeah, them bringing me around and doing all that stuff, you know, I mean, Jimmy Kimmel was the final show I played before uh, COVID hit. That was, like, the week that everyone went into lockdown and they came as, uh, you know, the, they came on air with me and performed. And uh, Wow. Yeah, yeah, that meant a lot to me. It was actually leads me to a prank. Mark is a great guy, but it was hilarious. Jimmy Kimmel was like, he was like, how'd you guys like uh, link this up? And then Mark was like, oh, he won like a competition. And we all were like, not sure if Jimmy like knew that it was a joke or not. But I was like, you know what? Like that, I would be offended at that, but I pretty much did. I was like, because there is no reason that Blink-182 should be playing live tv with a fucking little kid from manitoba but oh, man. you know what <laughs> but it happens <laughs> i'm sorry if i'm not allowed to swear but you can I curse to, all you I want let's go <laughs> fuck yeah let's go <laughs> well you've been able to back it up man nobody can say that you won a competition now because you've been able to put out even more <laughs> music since then right. and the brand new album available right now it is solid i'm telling you just if you don't know who Goody Grace is, sit down, throw on the headphones, listen from track one through four, and I guarantee, 100% gun show guarantee, let's effing go, you will fall in love with this album because you'll just be like, damn. And those four different emotions on those four different tracks, and you'll be sucked in and ready to go. And then, of course, you got Scumbag a little bit later in the track list as well, and we're only hoping for and uh, looking forward to, I should say, even more Goody Grace music coming out. Got a lot of thoughts. I know you got a lot of thoughts in your mind, a lot of tracks that you want the people to hear, my man. 
I do. I got a lot <laughs> to say, and a new music's coming right around the corner, man. That was really just the start, and now the gates are open, so it's there not it going is. down. All right, final question, Simi, because this person keeps asking a lot in the chat. Now they want to know what your favorite, I haven't asked a question, but favorite book. Do you have a favorite book out there? Uh, uh, my favorite book is, yeah, I, I read a lot, but um, I love anything by Jack Kerouac, and then I also really love The Catcher in the Rye. Uh, I just got a catch in the ride tattoo last year up on my arm. So I think that might be my favorite. That book really inspired me. There it is. See, I'm, I'm the gun show, man. And now that person followed me as well. So there, a man of the people I am. I ask your go. questions. Goody Grace, follow him. I know you got to run, man. Appreciate you coming in. I appreciate you not, cra course, not crashing you. the car either. That's a good good job on your I'm part. Parked. <laughs> I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be doing this and driving. I'm responsible. I'm just parked on the side in Hollywood. People probably think I'm a weirdo. But. <laughs> just like everybody else, right? Just like everybody else. Yeah, absolutely. Goody Grace, yep. appreciate you coming on. We're going to play Auburn here, man. Sound good? Ah, oh, thank you, man. We I'd have, love that. That's what we do here on The Gun Show. I can play anything you guys want from a fan to the fans. That's what The Gun Show is. Check him out. Learn him. Saw musician. Goody Grace. My man, we are balling. Let's go. Can't wait till you're back in New York Thank City, so man. Much, Give my best to everybody. I'll be back very soon. There we go. I'll see you soon. I will. Peace. Peace out, bro.